Hi everybody, welcome back to the Chasing Psychological Safety video series. This week we wanted to delve again into the incredibly important topic of impression management within psychological safety, which we talk to you about week in, week out. Impression management, as you know, is an incredibly important part of building psychologically safe teams, understanding what impression management is and how it detracts from a psychologically safe team environment can really help you to unlock that uh, psychological safety and vulnerability which is so powerful to that within teams. So what is impression management? It is the negative side of psychological safety. Psychological safety is the safe to speak up environment. It's the openness, the honesty, the vulnerability. Impression management is not speaking up for fear of appearing incompetent, intrusive, ignorant, or negative. So we really wanted to delve into today um, more than just what it is and why it's important, but it's important because it detracts from psychological safety and the more we see it in teams, we lower it. We're gonna to talk to you a bit more about the details of impression management and then how you can recognize it as well and keep an eye on it. So the number one thing to remember is we're not pointing fingers. We're not saying some people are doing impression management and some others aren't because we all are, absolutely. And we are doing it in much bigger of an amount than we think we are, much more often than we think we are. And in fact, one of the, the big shocks as soon as you start understanding how to recognize it is how many times it happens on a daily basis. And it does so in almost all of our interactions. So whether they are work interactions where we are telling you it's a serious issue if you, if you notice this behavior or they are personal interaction, you're still going to be doing quite an amount of impression management. And to a degree, this is incredibly natural. We all want to appear, to put our best foot forward and appear in our best light towards people we care about. Um, it is deeply embedded in our, our, our understanding of self to attempt to present ourselves in the, in the best light possible. So it, not all impression management is necessarily negative or nocive or a problem. For instance, um, we could be engaging in impression management when we, when we are using PR. We could be engaging in impression management when we are uh, presenting ourselves in a certain light in, um, on social media. And unless those behaviors are um, coming at a cost to you as an individual, unless you realize that there's a negative side to you having done so, um, if it's just a question of vanity and trying to appear like you're keeping up with the Jones, then it's not necessarily a dangerous um, type of behavior. You don't need to stay away from it. But obviously, if you start to understand that it is corroding some of the relationships around you, if it comes at the cost of trying to keep it up, if it is um, making you be anxious, if it's impacting the quality of your life to kind of keep up a certain personal um, image for fear of appearing a certain other way then try not do it in your personal life either. So the big difference between doing the, the slightly unimportant neutral type of, of impression management in personal relationships versus the really negative behaviors of psychological safety is because in a team environment you actually are depending on everyone not doing it. So what you need for a team to be functional and high performance is for everyone to really bring themselves to really open up, to really say when they notice that something's wrong, to really give their ideas. If you lose that, and if people stop themselves from doing those behaviors that you need as a team, then you can't be winning as a team. So having impression management in a team directly impacts the team's ability to succeed because they can't have psychological safety, they can't be growing. So in, in, when it comes to work, doing any type of impression management almost is a bad idea, whether that is impression managing against looking too personal or looking unprofessional or any of the less well-known ones, they still are all uh, contributing to um, essentially a bad environment where you're not being authentically yourself with the team. And every time you do it, you get less and less close to um, being a high-performing team. Absolutely. And how do you recognize that? How do you recognize that in yourself? How do you recognize that in other people? Dwayne has already talked a bit about, you know, what it can look and feel like if you are impression managing personally and professionally. But really what we want people to be doing is taking a moment, using the catch yourself counter technique that we talk about, which is the impression management catch yourself 
moment of I'm in a meeting, I have an idea, or I don't think what people are saying is quite right, but I'm not going to say that right now. I'm just going to wait and see what happens. Something like that thought crosses your mind. Hang on a minute, why am I doing this? And what impact is that going to have on the psychological safety of the team if I don't speak up? And what impact could it have on the psychologically psychological safety of the team if I do speak up? Because it's not just for you that you don't impression manage. It's for the benefit of everybody else in the team as well, for raising that psychological safety as a group behavioral norm in the team. So keep an eye out for yourself. Recognize those moments. It's about self-awareness. It's about self-EQ. Just saying to yourself, why am I not speaking now? Why am I feeling like I'm holding back? Investigate that for a moment and then give yourself permission to speak up and be open. But then watch out for it in other people as well. If you think somebody has an idea, you can see, even in, even in the virtual environment, you can see the body language of somebody who isn't speaking up, who perhaps wants to, slight leaning forward, head cocked, you know, interested, but not quite sure whether they can say something or not. Somebody hasn't spoken for a long time in a, in a meeting or a session or a workshop or whatever it might be. Find the moments, seek out those moments where people aren't speaking. As Amy Edmund says, Edmondson says, we can mitigate for what we do here, but we cannot mitigate for what we don't hear. So ensuring that you support other people to speak up when you think there might just be a gap, you think they might have something to say, but they're not speaking up. Being aware of how people are feeling based on the, exp the, the external things that you know that are impacting the team at that time, might that be holding people back from speaking up? And then gently inviting those people to speak up and reassuring them that this is a trusting environment, a psychologically safe environment for you to take that risk and to speak up. Right, and you can do all those things yourself. Um, you don't need us for them. But as ever, uh, we're making no secret out of it. We make software that will not only throw up alerts of the times when any member of the team has engaged in impression management, obviously without naming the name, the member of the team or the actual instance, just kind of an, a counter of when those instances have happened, just so as a team, you can kind of do something about it. But more so when the question is asked and is put to the team member, the way that we formulate those questions is designed so that it further allows you to reframe around catching yourself when it happens again. Have you been, um, have you bit your lip of late in a meeting? Have you been reluctant to raise concerns? Have you found yourself wondering if you look like you're gonna lose any clout with the team if you ask something? The type of questions that we're asking are teaching team members to recognize the behavior and ideally diminish it themselves. So come talk to us and, and we'll show you what was built in terms of impression management in the software. And if not, at least do this thing on your own, pen and paper, ask the right questions, mm -hmm. um, and then keep an eye on your behavior and the behavior of other team members. So stay psychologically safe and we will talk to you next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye.